Today is the start of a new project. I'm used to working on BMWs, but a few months ago I acquired a 1997 Porsche Boxster. It's the very first generation of the, the Boxsters, the first year of the Boxsters, in fact. And I acquired this from a neighbor who didn't drive it very much, said it was too small. So it's been sitting around for a bit. It's only got 65,000 miles on it. The IMS bearing has never been replaced, and the first thing that anybody asks when you try to sell them a 986 or a 996 Porsche is has the IMS been fixed? So I figured this car is not a car I'm going to keep for any length of time. I have to do the IMS bearing. And while I'm at it, I'll do the rear main seal and a new clutch. And so it should be good to go after that. All I've got to do is find somebody to take a look at the, uh, the gearbox for me. So the car is up on the lift. My darling wife is just arriving. And I'm going to start taking this thing apart. And it's going to be, this video is more to, to remind me what I'm doing in taking this thing apart. It's more for that than for an educational piece. I am going to be fitting an LN engineering um, replacement IMS bearing, and uh, I will order that as soon as I've got the car apart. Looking at this, it's all rather grubby underneath here. Um, so let's get these covers off and these support brackets and let's see what happens that's interesting got some goop around there that might explain the funny shimmy that this car has i have to look into that that's the same on this side so maybe it's meant to be like that they don't look too bad These support braces had nothing to do with positioning the suspension because when I undid the bolts, they literally fell off. They are just attached to the, uh, the plastic under tray there. So just need to undo that. So that was a bunch of 15 millimeter bolts and make sure you have a good breaker bar ready to start them off because if they haven't been moved in 25 odd years, they're not gonna move right away. And of course my light has given up as soon as I started work. The next step is to take off the exhaust. So as you can see, this didn't go too well. This is the passenger side. All three bolts off the exhaust snapped. And then this is the driver's side. These two came off. But somewhat strangely, on this side, there is a captive nut welded on and a bolt that goes through. And I've, I've seen that elsewhere. Um, and of course that won't budge and it's a bugger to get to. I'm gonna have to take out the oxygen sensor, which I'm gonna have to do anyway. And it looks like there's just a plug up there, which is good. Um, so I was gonna have to take those out anyway. But what is interesting on this side, if you look at the oxygen sensor here, <laughs> it was loose. So God knows how that was giving proper readings. So anyway, let's get this bolt out. Oh, I left my glasses on. Uh, we'll get this bolt out, get the oxygen sensors out, get my light charged and carry on. Well, these were not a success. But these ones came out very easily. So now I have to remember that this is the exhaust bracket that goes in that way. Well, that, as they say, was a bit of a faff. What we have here is the exhaust system in its entirety, um, because all this is too corroded to be able to get apart on the car. Um, Anti-roll bar has to come out to be able to get the exhaust out in one piece. This cross brace comes out afterwards. Uh, this was the 
underpan and these were the two um, side support braces. The most difficult thing was unbolting two nuts and bolts here at the back of the gearbox for the exhaust. It's the craziest thing because instead of having a captive nut on here, they have it loose. So it's really difficult to get to. Um, and I've seen some places where they suggest taking the, uh, taking the rear bumper off, but I wasn't gonna do that. The other thing that I couldn't find any documentation on was how to access the post-cat uh, oxygen sensors. All the videos you see online about how easy it is to change the oxygen sensors are all talking about the pre-cat ones. The post-cat ones, I think what you're supposed to do is remove this inner lining and then you can get at the, um, there's a plug up here above the uh, heat shield. Or you can do what I did and just pull this down and you can reach up inside and unplug it. So the exhaust came off in one piece, but it was a lot of hard work to get it out and to move it and jiggle it around. Um, so I'm gonna try dismantling it. it. Everything looks fine, but I'm gonna try dismantling it on the ground so I can put it back in pieces. Um, this stud here, I'm gonna to have to drill out. I probably just cut this captive nut off and weld a new one on, um, or I may just put do with the same things the uh, everywhere else and just put a stud, a stud in. These on this side need replacing, so I have to press those out. Even though the other side is good, I'll probably put new ones in there as well. Tomorrow we can start to take apart the. Uh, the gearbox will remove the drive axles and tie them up. The boots actually look in pretty good condition. Um, looks like there's a leak here, but not too bad. So maybe I'll leave those. There's some kind of leak up there coming from above, um, which is where the coolant reservoir is, I think. So I'll have to investigate that. That's known to crack. Now, I am amazed that this car wasn't throwing a code because the oxygen sensor that was here wasn't even screwed in. It was just loose. So that was, was quite surprising. Now, what we have to do tomorrow is take all these bolts out, except for this one I won't be able to do because I don't have the tool. I have to order that. It's a uh, three square. I think it's called. And be very careful when you take these bolts out to make sure I identify where they came from because they're all different lengths. And I think you can get at them all from, from below. Pretty much there might be one right on the top. We have to disconnect the cables and those look pretty new. Much cleaner than everything else that's under here. So I have a feeling those have been changed. We need to take this bracket and heat shield off because if you don't, I don't think you've got enough room at the back to get the, uh, the gearbox out. The gearbox supports have to come out. You do that by undoing these two bolts. You do not touch this one because that will damage it if you do, apparently. We need to unclip the cables. The reverse cable needs unclipping up there. The clutch. The slave is easy to get at now. I've taken everything out. Um, and, and that will be it. And then I'm going to move the jack tray underneath the engine to support that while I take the gearbox out. And we should be good. I, th I think the hardest, most paffiest bit is done. So this car is filthy underneath here. I don't know if there's an oil leak. I mean, it looks, it looks like there's a lot of dirt and crud on the, the gearbox where it meets the um, where it meets the engine, so that could be the indication of a, of an oil leak. It doesn't look like anything's coming out there or there or here. Um, so I think that's the dirtiest part of the work done. Now all I've got to do is tidy up, put my tools away, like I do at the end of uh, every night. Yeah, not really. Uh, clear up this mess. I've got to put the end coop back underneath there 
and all this stuff is going to get a really good clean so when I put it back on at least it's going to look a little better. My most useful tool today, this big piece of tubing to stick on the end of my breaker bar. Without that I wouldn't have been able to get things apart. And I only ended up with a very small pile of broken nuts and bolts. These are the ones I showed you earlier from the exhaust. So those can go in the bin. Always good to replace those anyway. So until tomorrow, cheers.